YouTube, it's Tom, back with another one for you. This one here today is uh, it's a continuation of Cracking the Code, uh, Cracking the Code 3. This is the 14th uh, installment of this, uh, of this little series. So this is a short one today because this is the end of this little particular section. And then after this, we're going to get into why you're... <laughs> Why you're responsible? Why, why they think that you're responsible for the uh, for the national debt and shit like that? So, which I think is fucking hilarious. But so let's get right into this here. Your future, by definition, the UCC encompasses all codified statutory law in existence, and it has to because it's all uh, commercial. So, you know, when you understand the true nature of the people and the entities that you're dealing with which are uh, corporate in nature, uh, you want to look into what governs the corporate uh, structure, right? So what, what, what rules are they following and who's, uh, you know, who's uh, watching them essentially, right? And who's, who's making sure that they're doing the right thing, right? They got you over here, you know, studying, uh, you know, codes and statutes and things like that, you know, which is good to know, you know, depending on what type of fight that you're trying to put up, but you know, ultimately, the shit is all commercial. So this is all going to be governed by Uniform Commercial Code, right? Uh, and it's going to be subject to all of those terms. So if, it was, if there was anything that I would highly recommend for you to study and learn would be the UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, and understand how uh, how all of these processes work as far as commerce goes, um, as far as presentments go, and, and, and things of that nature, right? Because that's going to help you to get a better understanding of how exactly to deal with these people uh, on your terms. Uh, and based on the terms that they already agreed to so they don't they don't really have a choice but to adhere to the uniform commercial code so right here by definition the ucc encompasses all codified statutory law in existence governing all intercourse between an intercourse is just a uh, transaction between and among all people businesses and governments as well as the issue of all currency money the single most important commodity in modern society the master merchants that develop the UCC are fixated on enslavement, extermination of all outsiders by legal commercial military, i.e. admiralty means the sooner that you realize the dead seriousness of your would-be self-appointed slave masters, executioners, and face facts of how the world goes around, the better chance you will have of avoiding victimization at the hands and enjoying your life. Once people stop agreeing to stop volunteering into commercial subjugation, the holy masters will have some serious problems on their hands as they comprise only a minute segment of the population. Uh, hence, the need for all the underdog hate crime legislation which they organize and authorize. Right? So, I mean, these people are really a bunch of fucking nobodies that somehow managed to convince everybody that they have no power and a small select few have all the power. Really, bro? Get the fuck out of here with that. So, let's get into this next slide. You know, that's like a fucking ant somehow convincing a giant that he has no power and letting him walk all over him and bite him whenever he wants. Bro, get, you, you could just slap it and make it go away. And that's how these people, <laughs> that's exactly what these people are. So, institute through their lackeys uh, in D.C. and elsewhere. Their influence can be rather easily offset once a large number of people catch on. The Crown and the U.S. government are bankrupt front operations for these uh I don't even know what the fucking word is. Miscreants uh, propped up for no other reason than to bilk and politic uh, and politically subjugate any and all who mistakenly do business with either. See, because it's all commercial in nature, right? Every look, slave. You know, and this might be hard for people to grasp, but slavery has been a choice, okay, for all, the whole time. They can't force anybody to fucking do anything, even though they have, right? So they, you know, they sometimes play outside of their bounds. You know, more often than not, actually, but. Uh, I don't really think that they're doing it on purpose. I think a lot of these people have been brainwashed themselves into believing that they have power that they don't fucking have either. So, you know, have they forced people to do shit? Have I been forced to do things? Yeah, I mean, I feel that way. But in all reality, I really don't think anybody ever really forced me to do anything. I just believe that I had no other choice because they made me believe, well, because they put out information that made me believe so, right? And until you do further research, you're gonna just have to believe whatever they say until you do your own your own research. So, but it all really has been a choice. So despite the best laid plans of your self-appointed overlords, however, the current predicament is now rather uh, easily remedied. 
The name of the game is commerce, contracts revealed and unrevealed, accounting, debits, credits, commercial machinery is triggered by unwittingly, voluntarily contracting with private governmental corporations long since bankrupt and now only shams for Federal Reserve creditors. Consensual contracts are enforced both judicially via the legal system and privately, non-judicially via uh, contracts, uh, the prescriptions of the UCC, right? And this is so like, you know, contracts are crucial to have them in place because if you don't have a promissory estoppel in place or, 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 uh, or ever have put them on notice as to what your position is and where you stand, when you come in contact with them, they're going to assume that you're under their contracts and you're playing by their rules unless you have something that says otherwise. Right, this is what they do. Presumptions and fucking assumptions. So when you make a self-determined decision to do business with corporate government, you will inevitably suffer the consequences. In America, the notion of freedom extends no further than the right to contract with whomever you wish, right? And the right not to contract with those that you do not want to contract with. Once a trusting citizen enters into a contract with a bankrupt government, however, he becomes a fiscal subject, right? And now they're looking at you as fucking dollar signs. And all other freedoms become distant memories. The only, which I, which I know all too well, all too well do I know that. So the only thing impeding in survival is your grasp of the essence of the basic terms used to describe any commercial relationship and the rules of commerce as embodied in the Uniform Commercial Code. For the others of the currencies, of, uh, for the owners of the currencies of the world, the UCC, the only game in town, eclipsing and engulfing all others, see UCC 1-103, ignore it at your peril. All right, so this is not something that you really just want to take lightly. You have to understand the Uniform Commercial Code and you have to understand that these people are all essentially working for a corporate entity, which is a fictional fucking uh, created uh, entity. It isn't real. It isn't, it isn't tangible, right? So really, it's, it's a fucking, it's a bunch of mind control. Because if you ever asked to speak with the corporation that they work for, you couldn't. You couldn't put it in your hand. It's just, it's just on paper. The whole, it's just a concept. It's a, I mean, really, it's a religion, if you want to be real. It's really a religion, which is all sa uh, Saturn worship. And Saturn isn't all bad. You know, they, you, you know, they play their parts here, too. So it is what it is. But fortunately for all, a few sturdy souls have deciphered the key issues and principles, factors for redemptors, and have charted the route through the UCC and revised Article 9 and made it out the other side. Something can be done, and it is arming oneself with the, some kind of ammo being used against one. The silver bullets of the articles of the Uniform Commercial Code. The first step is copywriting your all capital letter trade name under the common law as described in detail in the practical section of this manual. If you guys want information on how to get that done too, you can email me. I'll send you some information on how to go ahead and uh, copyright your information. Mean, you can do copyright, uh, common law copyright, things like that. Putting your, you know, putting your name in the paper, you know, things like that. Uh... So no one in the legal system, government, including any esquire of any stature at any level, has any right to use your common law copyrighted property for commercial gain without compensating you. Right? And that's why your fee schedule goes in there too. As soon as they put that shit on paper, they owe you. Okay, as soon as they put your name down, they got to pay for that. So those who foolishly believe that they are above the law and untouchable by little people will, qu will quickly discover the dead seriousness of the consequences of dealing with someone who understands the key elements of the Uniform Commercial Code and how to enforce them. The objective of this article is to help the student of law with an understanding of the actual nature of the legal system so he she is not tripped up into believing the propaganda issuing therefrom and trusting their juristic dismembers that specialize in crushing dreams and destroying lives. Learn and use the, uh, the self-same weapon of choice of those who would confiscate the very air you breathe if they could, the Uniform Commercial Code, and afford yourself the best chance of prevailing over... Uh, pernicious esquires and the organized criminal syndicate that invented them all right so mind you you know they're just doing their job i mean this whole reality is highly scripted in nature anyway so everybody's really just playing their part but a lot of these people are dickheads still like you know you put them on notice and they want to pretend they never got it and things like that so you know you are just dealing with people ultimately at the end of the day so the curse of cold surety ship, why you are held accountable for the national debt. In 1989, Austin Gary Cooper was prosecuted by the Department of Justice in the U.S. Court for failure to file an income tax return. The United States of America versus Austin Gary Cooper, case number 89-109-CR-H-O-E-V-L-E-R, Southern District of Florida. In this otherwise ordinary tax case, Cooper elicited a staggering discourse from the judge, uh, the 
there are simultaneously two citizenships, citizens of the United States and an American citizen, quoting from the case. Uh, Cooper, I want a judicial determination. Am I an American citizen or a citizen of the United States? Judge says you're both. Okay, so that means that there's two, right? So the Department of Justice prosecutor Linda, whatever, and assistant used, uh, assistant United States attorney in her closing argument revealed that United States citizenship is based strictly on contract. Referencing Austin Gary Cooper, the prosecutor revealed, uh, he pays a social security and he uses the postal service. Therefore, Mr. Cooper is a U.S. citizen. Okay, well, can you really be a U.S. citizen, though? First of all, it's a fiction, for one, because uh, the United States is a corporation. Essentially, it's a British colony in Washington, uh, which, col which colonization is fucking illegal, for one. And then, two, it's a corporation, and how the fuck could you be a citizen of a corporation? It's essentially, they're calling you a fucking employee, right? So, that, so that's what that is. So, Ko Kolowski divulged that the payment of social security taxes and the use of the United States Postal Service constituted contracts of co-surety, not co-debtor, that rendered uh, Cooper and anyone else so contracting under federal jurisdiction and a subject of mandatory federal income taxation, surety is defined as. And so, I mean, you want to get into what the USC uh, definition of income is. Okay, well, that's going to be uh, dividends made from any investments of so stocks, bonds, things like that. Uh, that doesn't encompass private contracts that you have for physical labor and things like that. So you want to get into federal income taxation. Yeah, well, okay, let's get into what the fucking definition of uh, income is. Because it's not what you think it is. Okay? So, and this is how, you know, a lot of these judges don't fucking know this either. They, you know, when was the last time that they opened a the book, right? So a person who is primarily liable for the payment of another's debt or the performance of another's obligation. A cool surety is a... Uh, is a surety who shares the cost of surety ship obligations with another other's assistance. United States Attorney assertions reveals that uh, any who pay into Social Security and use the Postal Service are considered mutually legally liable as co-sureties for the debt of the United States, i.e. the national debt, and thereby obligated <laughs> to pay income tax. I would highly recommend you get into what the definition of income is, okay? Because these people are, you know, I mean, they, they just say whatever they want to say. So flesh and blood men and women born in one of the 50 several states are American citizens, a standing acquired by birth, their artificial alter ego, all caps trade name, is a citizen of the United States. And that is the only thing that could be a citizen, could be your all caps name, which is not you either. The same as you're not your fucking ID. So somebody who, you know, oh, well, you got ID on you and you give it to them and they're like, oh, is this you? Bro, how could you be holding my ID and it be me when I'm standing here looking at you? Don't be silly. So... Is a citizen of the United States a status acquired via contract? Judge uh, Hovler also acknowledged that there are there are other media other than doing business with Social Security and uh, and the Postal Service by which American citizens regularly contract into becoming a citizen of the United States, but declined to comment further. So, you know, it's beyond me how people even think that you can become a citizen of some shit that doesn't even fucking exist. So that shit is just crazy. That shit is ridiculous. But what are you going to do? So, the act of July 27th, 1868, the Cooper judge comments are in harmony with legislation passed by the United States Congress, uh, formally acknowledging American citizenship and providing for expa uh, expatriation of American citizens from other citizenships they may hold. An act concerning the right of American citizens in foreign states, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that any declaration, instruction, or uh, order or decision of any officers of this government which denies, restricts, impairs, or questions the right of expa uh, expatriation, which means your right to uh, not be a U.S. citizen if you decide to rescind any contracts that may be by minimum contacts, uh, you know, there's there's many ways to enter into into contract with these people. Uh, short of you signing a piece of paper, you don't have to sign a piece of paper. They, you know, they judge it mainly based on your actions. So, is hereby declared inconsistent with the fundamental principles of this government. The language used uh, by the 40th Congress unequivocally speci uh, specifies American citizens in foreign states rather than in foreign countries. What? Then is the special significance, if any, of a foreign state over a foreign country, consulting with the Constitution, 
uh, of the United States of America, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, we find that the geographical limits and realm of the political authority of the United States government. So the Congress shall have the power to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square. So their uh, jurisdiction cannot exceed 10 miles square, which is their, what, what, however many blocks they got in Washington, five blocks, 10, 10 square miles. That's where their jurisdiction lies. And the only way you're going to end up in their jurisdiction is if you somehow contract with them in some way, shape, or form. Uh, uh, by session of the particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature and the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other meaningful buildings. Looking further into the Constitution, Article 4, Section 4 reveals a political distinction between the United States and several states. The United States shall guarantee to every state in his union a Republican form of government. Uh, further, 19 uh, Corpus Juris Secundum, 5-1-1990, spells it out even more clearly. The United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. What is a state? Uh, well, there's two states. For one, there's one state that is the people, right? Without a fucking people, you really don't have a state now, do you? Because who even knows that it's there? So a state is the people, essentially. So the United States government is foreign with respect to a man or woman. You can say you can interchange that with state. Okay, so they are a foreign government. So, which is why, you know, the Trading with the Enemies Act came into play and all that. And they, and they had to put that into play because they were literally at war with us. And in order to trade with somebody that you're literally at war with, they had to go ahead and create some legislation. So they went ahead and did that, Trading with the Enemy Act, look it up. So as shown above, it is readily discernible from the simple examination of the Constitution and Corpus Juris Secundum that 50 several states are foreign states in respect to the United States, which exists only within the district, not exceeding 10 miles square of Washington, D.C. This fact is echoed by unambiguously in the uh, Uniform Commercial Code here and after UCC. Location of the United States. The United States is located in the District of Columbia, UCC 9-307H. The 50 several states of the Union, therefore, may rightly be considered as foreign states in the above excerpt and uh, act setting forth the stance of the United States government re-expatriation -re uh, of American citizens in foreign states. So this is what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a foreign corporation, essentially, which is beholden to all of its stockholders, right? And... It's just a big ass game. So, you know, it is a game of chess. Stop playing checkers with these clowns. That's what I got for you for now. Until we meet again.